Alrighty, hello there. Welcome back. Just stepping over the gate into the field behind my property on a bit of a fungus hunt. Got my new basket. Gonna be heading off up the side of the river into the fields, into the woods, up and down the valleys looking for edible fungus. And I think in about 20 yards we've got our first candidates for the basket. It's looking very promising already. Let's just spin this camera around and I'll show you. Now we've had a lot of rain recently in the last few days and I noticed on my lawn and in the hedgerows there's a lot of fungus popping up. I was hoping it was popping up in the fields. Have a look at this. Get in there. Just ordinary field mushrooms. Some of them are quite nice button ones as well. They're going to be absolutely lovely. And we've got a few more up here. In fact, they're popping up all over the place. This is an awesome start. So I'll get them gathered up and I'll let you see what I've got from this little spot. There you go. That's not a bad start. Now there's definitely some down there because I can see those from my kitchen window. We'll get to those in a moment, but I think there's some more just in front of me here. Something looks very white anyway. Yep, that'll do me. Look at that man, beautiful. Now there's probably already a nation of people questioning why I'm taking them when they're so small. You know, why not wait until they, they get a bit bigger and a bit more substantial? Well, I don't know whether you can see, but all the fields around my place, they've got cows in. And if you leave the mushrooms for more than two or three days, the cows just absolutely trash them. So you've got to get them. If you see them, you've got to get them. Right, now the ones I can see from my window are around here somewhere. Somewhere just over here. Cannot see them from here though. Hmm. Ah, there they are. Oh. Right, I can see those. And they look a bit bigger. And they look like they've been kicked over as well. That one's certainly been kicked over. Oh, that one hasn't. That's okay. And we've got another one over there. It looks pretty good. Yeah, and that one's perfect. That's a really nice one. Mm, it's been a bit eaten, but it'll still be all right. I'll just cut it in half. Like so, that's all right. Hey, never mind that, never mind charging me when I've got my back turned. You little buggers. You know what it's like. Sometimes you come into a little wooded area. Not many fungi about. You don't fancy eating the funnel caps. And there's a river which looks very fishy. So, you've got to give it a go. All skills need to be practiced. And unfortunately, I've just got what I class as my big spinners. This is a size two Fox Vibrax spinner. I've normally used a size one, but there is some pretty big fish in this river, especially at this time of year, because you get the occasional sea trout coming up. 
and I would love to catch a sea trout, even though officially I am only fishing for trout. And really considering the size of this spinner, I'm either going to catch a beast or I'm going to catch nout. A great big lad just had a go at it. Hey, hey. Let's have another go. Maybe we'll get him this time. That was a better cast. Oh, shit. He had a go at it. And we've got him. Oh, and he's a beauty by the looks of it. Oh, yeah, hello. Bonjour. Oh, what a cracker. What an absolute beaut. Feast your eyes on that fella. <laughs> Five minutes into it and we've got a beautiful brownie, big summer brownie. Let's put them back. <laughs> so I'd better get back to the job in hand, which is hunting for edible fungi. That was a nice distraction though. Awesome, and that's how small that little rod packs up. I think I've done a video on this entitled The Smallest, Cheapest Telescopic Rod on eBay. I'll put a link to it in the video description. It's a cracking little rod and I've caught dozens and dozens of really decent trout on this rod. I highly recommend it. And I am absolutely nettled to bits. I made the stupid decision of putting shorts on and also short sleeves, so, oh God. I'm itching like hell. <laughs> and if anybody is just about to ask the question, where's the Madgies? I'm probably two or three weeks early for them. And to be honest, I don't bother with them anyway, but I know some of you guys do. <laughs> Normally end of September, really until mid-November up here is when they would come out, but Oh, a load of ducks just taken up there. Whoa! Give me a 12 gauge. I can hunt, trap, shoot with the best of them. But when it comes to identifying fungus, I am very much a beginner, unfortunately. I know the ones that can kill you, but I don't really know all the ones that could give you bad guts and I don't want to be laid up for a few days with the skitters. I'd rather play it safe. In fact, when you're dealing with fungi, you have to play it safe. This is the sort of land where you'd expect to see Boletus uh, and also Chanterelle as well. It's absolutely class. It's under hardwood. The deer are in here, crapping all over the place moving the mycelium around, digging. We've got a badger set just over the hilltop. They're constantly ratching about, spreading it all around. It's got to be something around this area. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon, probably after the next lot of rain. What a cracking set this is. God, there's holes all over the place. You yeah, little wood pigs. Ooh. Whoa, man, is that a new hole? Look at that. What a cracking hole that is. I wouldn't like to fall down there in the dark. This is a major bummer. It's not very late at all. It's probably only half five at night. You know, second or third week in September. But it looks like it's gonna absolutely slash down. It's gone really dark and it's making it very difficult to spot anything under this heavy 
tree cover. And if we didn't have enough badger sets, there's a fox set there as well. That's a cracking little fox earth, should I say. A fox earth. That's probably why I see foxes in my local field every single night. However, the foxes are good enough not to come within the boundaries of my land. And that's because a couple of years ago, I called one over and had a talk to it. It's an idea that I got from a podcast I listened to where a Native American guy talked to the local coyotes and he made a deal with them. He said, look, I'll leave you the odd bit of food out if you don't bother my chickens. So I made the same sort of deal with a local fox and I said, look, I've got all the weapons to take you out whenever I need to. I don't want to. If you don't bother me, I won't bother you. Leave my cats and my chickens alone and we'll get on just fine. And since then, honestly, it has never been within our fence line. Coincidence or not? Not the sort of thing that you would eat, I don't think. I think the cluster's inedible. Yeah, they wouldn't necessarily kill you, but it's one of those ones that would probably just give you bad guts. Very nice to look at though. What a beautiful display. And what's that down there? There's something there. Oh, what's that? That's definitely a Belitus of some sort. It's been absolutely pounded by the slugs. The slugs love them. And, oh, what? Dear God. That was probably Belitus edulis. Also known as Sep, also known as Porcini mushroom. Oh man, imagine what that would have been like. It probably would have come up over the period of 24, 48 hours, a big thing, and then been absolutely pounded by the slugs, so I'm too late for that one. But at least I know where they grow. I swear it must be close to 100% humidity. <laughs> I'm absolutely sweating like a beast, and it's not even that warm. But it does feel like it's going to rain. I'm in a super dark part of the wood now. It might not look like it on the camera because it's fairly amplifying the light, but I can hardly see anything. I would say my vision in here is probably reduced by 50 to 60 percent just because of the darkness. It's, it's a real struggle. However, I have found a sep. There we go. Oh, unfortunately, it's big been kicked over by the deer but that will still be sound that's a nice fungus Sep Porcini oh what's the other name for it oh Belitus Belitus edulis the size of that man that's what I found before the bottom part of the stem I mean that's unmistakable that's a 100% edible mushroom and it's probably one of the best ones you can get as well Really strong, meaty, beefy taste to that. If I could find some more of these, I'd be loving it. The only problem is though, when they're kicked over, they've got a white stem, they're very easy to see. That, in amongst all the leaves, is less easy to see. You've got to have really sharp eyes at the best of times. So I'm probably going to have to come back to this area when it's light, possibly in the next few days. These are obviously fruiting now. So, oh man, I need to find more of these. But it's going to be difficult today. Ah, there's another one which has been absolutely savaged by the slugs. That's just buggered. There's no point even picking that. Looks like there's another one coming up here. Just starting. That'll be ready in a couple of days. So it's well worth noting. Ah, there may be another one over there as well. This is really dark. Yes, there is. Again, you know, it might be sacrilege picking something this small, but there's so many deer in these woods that it's going to kick it over, and the slugs are probably going to hammer it. That's a nice find. Now, I'm in an area where I know there's amethyst deceivers, seps, and also hedgehog fungus as well, just up on the, well, on the flat part, up that hill there. There's normally a big circle of them. So I'll see if there's any up there. It should be a little bit lighter up there as well. 
this place down here, this bloody, really dark valley, is definitely the place for the seps though. So I will be back in the next couple of days, it probably around about midday, when I'll be able to see properly. Oh, there's a couple here that have been absolutely savaged by the slugs. Might be able to salvage some part of this one though. No, look at that, there's even a slug still inside it. <laughs> you little buggers. Oh, there's a one though, there's a one. That's just come up, that should be okay. Yep, that's not too bad. You've got to get them quick, otherwise the slugs just absolutely pound them. Yep. I absolutely have to come back here when it's proper daylight. <sighs> yeah, there's a lot of fungi in here. I'm probably walking over the top of a lot of it as well, just unable to see it in the really dark bits. But here we've got loads of like rotten branches on the ground. We've got beech leaves, you know, up to like a foot thick in places. It's absolutely perfect. It's quite a damp north facing bank side. It's really good. Really good. We might find some more before the end of this video, but it's going to be difficult. Yeah, so we're going to abort the mission on that dark bank side. I'm kind of wasting my time trying to scratch about in the dark looking for fungi. I'll definitely come back there during the light. I'm going to head further up into the wood now. Hopefully it'll be a little bit lighter. And I'm going to go to an area where I think there might be some Horn of Plenty. Um, where me and Colin went there a couple of... Me and Colin... Oh, Colin and I went there a couple of years ago. And the reason I think there might be some Horn of Plenty in the next place is that Colin and myself went there two or three years ago. It was a little bit later in the season and there was a lot of like black slavery mess on the bank side, possibly from expired Horn of Plenty. But we'll see. Well, I'm almost home now and I found absolutely naught else. I came back along the road cut through the fields and I'm probably about 50 yards away from my fence line. Looks like there's a thrash to bits mushroom here. Yeah, that's not worth picking up. However, we did manage to find some edibles. Take a look at this. So we've got a mixture of two species here, mostly field mushrooms and some porcini, sep, penny bun, belitus edulis, good stuff. Fish and fungi, I'd buy that for a dollar. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video where we will hopefully go back to those woods where we found those nice belitus and find a lot more because I know for a fact that's a very productive site and if I go there in full daylight I should be able to exploit it. See you next time. I can see you.